Today is rosette day here in the shop. You can see on the computer behind me, there we go. <laughs> I've got a design going and then I've got my rosettes laid out here. And on the other side of the garage, I've got some boards milled. So I wanna show you what I'm doing and explain how it's all hopefully going to come together. This is the rosette design that I have. And you can see I've got a large volume here and then a small. So this is an eighth of an inch. I think this is maybe half of an inch, somewhere close to there. And I wanted a pattern that would go into both of those voids. So it looks continuous, even though there's an interruption in it. I hope this isn't too complicated here, but the dark blue here is going to be Ovencol. So I wanted to tie the sides in with the rosette. And this is really, this build is an experiment. So I didn't want to go too crazy. I started pulling out ebony and rosewood and all these crazy things. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a proof of concept guitar or these two guitars are proof of concept. So Ovang call here and then maple in the white spots. And I think that'll look pretty sweet. And if you take a look at this corner, this is the block that will be cut and then book matched to make these. So I drew this out how I thought I wanted it to come together. And then I copied it over here and kind of rotated it so that I could glue up three pieces that weren't just crazy shapes and hard to clamp. So I'm gonna glue them up. It's gonna be like a Neapolitan <laughs> ice cream bar or something. Um, and then we'll cut them with these angles on there and hopefully wind up with pieces like this and then we'll cut that final bias on there that will allow it to be a 12 segmented circle. These are the boards I'm getting ready to glue up and two maple boards and an Ovan call board. And I've got these at three quarters of an inch, all three of them, and we'll glue them up. This one's a little bit smaller than I wanted. So I'm gonna use some spacers to keep it up. We're only gonna use a small triangle out of this. This is the little chiclet in the corner, um, but then I'm showing you the grain orientation. I thought it was important that, you know, we didn't, it, the grain orientation is going to be important <laughs> for the look of this. I want it to book match and, you know, kind of have that, that cool look and not look like an afterthought. So I, I took some time and kind of rearranged the boards here to where th this is how I want them. I've already jointed, plain, sized, all of this off camera. I don't think you guys need to see that. You, there's plenty of woodworking channels out there that'll show you how to mill a board. But I'm gonna glue these up and then we'll get to cutting them apart. <laughs> I've got my blade tipped over to 60 degrees or 30 degrees, however you want to divide it. And I've got it lined up. I'm trying to cut right on the edge of this maple strip. That's how my drawing has it. So I've got it, I've got the fence set just a little bit over. I'm gonna sneak up on the cut till I get it right where I want it. Then we'll run the whole board through. So the next cut, since we have a nice level surface here, the next cut is just gonna be vertical. So I put my blade back to 90 degrees and I'll set my fence, I'll nibble at it again till I get it right on that corner and I'll set my fence to just take off that piece right there.
That's looking pretty good. Now we need to rotate it around. Clip this side right here. So the last technical angle that I have is right here. So this piece is gonna be book matched on two sides, this vertical face and this angle. So it's a 30 degree angle to set my 12 piece uh, circle, I guess a circle divided in 12 pieces, 30 degrees. So I just spent a fair amount of time with my favorite protractor and a piece of scrap wood. I probably cut this angle seven or eight times before I was happy that it was just perfect. Fingers crossed, any minor error, <laughs> I can set this whole thing off. But I'm gonna try and hit the blade right here between the Ovang call and the maple, so I'll sneak up on that cut again, and then we'll just finish squaring off the piece. I've got my blank here and I think it's about as good as I'm gonna get it. And I've got a stop set up here in my miter gauge and I've got a set up for uh, about an eighth of an inch cut and I'm gonna make 24 cuts. Uh, I'll probably make a bunch of extras just because, but I gotta make at least 24. I would highly recommend against using a table saw for that last operation. Um, all of these, I stacked them as I cut them. I think you may have seen that in the video to try and get the book matches, you know, to be as accurate as possible. So just kind of taking these off in pairs. It's the first time I've seen it. Kind of cool. That one's got a little goofiness to it there. Let's see if this one's clean. Just sanding that edge a little bit so we get a tight fit. This is going to be hard to hold for glue. I can already tell it's going to fight me. <laughs> I may glue them in pairs. That feels like it's fairly sane. And then I've got a straight line here between the two halves. So I may glue these in pairs and then glue them in threes and then glue that together. I know that sounds like a, some extravagance maybe, I don't know. But um, I think that's gonna give me the best fighting chance. Because then if I, if I glue them up in halves, I can always sand the edge of both of them to get them to come in if I need to. But I think that's gonna look pretty sweet. Cut out. Ha! I guess time will tell. Those of you who've watched my channel for any amount of time will recognize that I have a piece of sandpaper stuck down to my table saw at all times. <laughs> and it's just for this. I wanna get these joints perfectly airtight. Again, just give him, giving it the best fighting chance for success. The, the tighter you have everything when you start, the better off you'll be at the end. <laughs> 
Looking at the camera there, I feel like I'm on some bizarre kind of cooking show. It's that angle. So I think what I'm going to do here is use this straight edge, put the pieces together and then run. I've got some thin star bond as my weapon of choice, I suppose, when it comes to CA glue. But just trying to make sure I've got, whoa, everything straight. Got a little bit of wax paper under everything. Always good to see it come through. I've also got all of these pieces numbered. So these are the one pair, two pair, three pair, four, five, and six. So where one and six are, you can see the book match doesn't line up. That will be under the fretboard. So all the other ones are as close as they can be because they were the book matched pairs coming out. I've clamped my straight edge to the table here and ha, I need more hands but I've got these things almost there. What I'm trying to do is get these two joints very very tight and then I can work on the joint between the two halves later down the road. Let's see how this works. That's not bad. Not bad. I'm going to keep these in the right orientation. Here we go. Here we go. So just putting these together, I'm looking at one and six and these two are the ones that are going to be under the fretboard. And so I'm going to try and get the back side of this rosette fit the best. And then whatever happens <laughs> up here happens up here. I'm not as concerned about it, but we can, we can make it nice. But what I'm seeing is there's a little gap here and a little gap there. So I'm going to put these like this and sand them on my paper. I'm going to apologize ahead of time. Sorry for the squeak. Hopefully you guys can see that. A little bit of a nubbin there. And this back edge looks really good. So I'm going to do everything in my power to hold this sucker steady. There we go. At <laughs> that looks pretty good. I'm I'm super happy. <laughs> I couldn't be happier. Now, if I could just keep it together as we cut it round, I'll be even more happy. I have the rosette blank super glued and taped to a scrap piece of acrylic. And the reason there is I want to be able to line everything up through the thing I'm taping it on. So I just happened to have some acrylic hanging out. So I've got everything zeroed up. I think it's pretty darn close. 
So I have three rosettes that I made. Uh, I did put some tabs into the program, so I'm hoping that really thin piece, I won't lose it. <laughs> I'm nervous, I'm not gonna lie, but we're gonna hit the cycle start button and see what happens. I'm very pleased. <laughs> this is number one. I did tabs here, eight of them around the circle, and I don't think I needed them. It's dialed in. I can't say enough good things about the Avid. They're not a sponsor or anything, but, um, you know, it was able to leave the tape. <laughs> That's how accurate it is. It's within just a couple thou vertically most of the time when I run it. And if I flattened my spoil board more often, it'd be even closer. But I don't know that I need them. Um, the tape was holding really well and I was running the machine. Uh, the program's at 50 inches a minute and then I'm running it at 25% of the speed. So that's that number right there. So very slow. This, is a, uh, this material is an eighth of an inch and I'm cutting it in three passes. I just don't want to risk anything. These things are fragile, and I spent a lot of time getting to this point. So I'm going to do the other two. I'm going to try one without tabs, fingers crossed, and then we'll see if they fit the guitar. I'm happy to report I didn't have tabs on this one, and it held just fine. I oriented it uh, a little different. I wanted it oriented just like the guitar is. So if there's any anomaly in the CNC uh, as far as dimensionality or circularity, circularity, <laughs> uh, concentricity, that it's in the same orientation as the guitar. So that's the joint between number one and number six. Uh, I'm going to number all these pieces so that when I put them back on the guitar, I don't accidentally rotate one of them the wrong way. So super stoked. I spent the last few minutes with a little piece of sandpaper, cleaning up the grooves, making sure the corners are clean. It needed just the slightest amount of clearance. I'm talking like three or four swipes, the piece of 180. I've got the body joint sorted out on both sides. Ha, I say that. It's that line right there. Yep, I've got the body joint sorted out. I've got this clocked the way I want it. I'm gonna use some yellow glue down in the groove, not much, just a little bit. As my dad would say, I'm not trying to float the Titanic here, just trying to get it glued nice and even. I think that's going to work right there. A little concentration here. Find my center line, it's right there. In we go. We're going to be able to make it. Come on, baby. Nope, we broke out. That's underneath the fretboard. I did that, the order of that on purpose. Let's see, this is the number one. So if that's going to go in there. Uh oh, got a little breakage here. Tighten that up. Tighten that up. That's that one. Let's see if we can make some modifications here very quickly. There we go. We're going to have one little missing chunk underneath the fretboard. No one but you and me. 
will ever know. That's in there. That looks great. That looks, that looks great. We could cut this one on purpose ahead of schedule. In fact, I think that's probably a good plan of attack. I don't know. It's fitting pretty good, but let's do it. Let's just let's just snap that one right there at the joint. Maybe cut off a little bit from either side. There we go. Gonna cut a little bit from that side. A little bit from that side. I think that's gonna be beautiful. Yeah. Yep, that's gonna work perfectly. Nice clean area to work here. Gonna put a couple beads of glue. One near the outside, one near the inside. You don't want it oozing all over the place, but you sure don't want your rosette coming loose in 10 years. I got no problems getting in here and kind of spreading this out. Again, just making sure we got the coverage. That's going to work. Most important, let's line up the back line. It's right on. Oh man, that's awesome. Oh, that looks good. Can't wait for this glue to dry so I can run it through the sander. There they are, both of them in. Super happy with both of them. Feel like they look good, they fit good. We're gonna let them dry for at least a few hours. I got a hockey game to watch. <laughs> Our avalanche are in the Stanley Cup, so I'm gonna watch that, let them dry, and then I'll come back, stick them through the sander. Both sound boards have had a few hours to dry. The Avalanche just won the Stanley Cup, so that's a bonus. <laughs> um, but we're gonna send these through here. Um, I think I got it set right. So hopefully we'll just be taking off the rosette. And then we'll send them through on the back side to get the right thickness. So here are the two tops. I couldn't be happier. It's been a great night. The Avalanche won the Stanley Cup and then these two things came out. I'm sure there are people who could do much better on these and as I get more under my belt, I'll probably start putting more complexity and variety into them. I didn't use purfling on these. Uh, I just went with the straight inlay there. It's nice and tight. There's no gaps in the joints, which is why I'm so happy about it. Um, the next step that I have is to thickness both of the tops. I don't have any expertise in that. I am going to a class next month with one of the world's foremost experts on tuning guitar tops and that sort of thing. So I'm hoping to pick up a lot of really good insight from him. But for now, I've got a range that I've seen other people, people thickness tops to and I'm just gonna stick with that range. I'm not gonna try and do anything crazy. Hopefully it will sound good. <laughs> if not, it'll just be a lesson in construction of guitar and, and not so much how you can make them sound great. But the next time we come back, we'll be bracing both of the guitar tops. We actually have some humidity here in the shop. Holy cow, we're usually 10 to 12% humidity. It's at 40 plus right now, so it'll be great for gluing the braces on these tops here in the shop and not having to humidify a room. Thanks for coming along on this video. This was really fun to do this. If you haven't done it yet, I would highly recommend it. Until next time, take care. 
If you would like more guitar-related content, click that subscribe button. If you want to follow the rest of this build, click the playlist to the right. And as always, visit SkyscraperGuitars.com for guitar tools and accessories.